Everyone loves a good frappuccino, but these facts about your favorite coffee store are downright gross. In this video, we're asking questions about this cafe franchise like, why are so many people addicted to Starbucks? And what is the story behind them? And what are some crazy and interesting facts that you should know? Starbucks is arguably the most popular coffee house in the world. But when most people enter a Starbucks to pick up their daily cup of joe, they probably aren't thinking about anything other than their own order. There are so many things you may have never known about Starbucks that could change the way you think of the place. There is nothing extraordinary in their coffee beans, and no special coffee or extra ingredients that produce addition aside from caffeine. Their success and customers' addiction with the brand does not come from the coffee. So, why are so many people addicted to Starbucks? Their little secret, Howard Schultz, Starbucks founder, spent a lot of effort not only in the beverage itself, but in the entire buying experience. This is why Starbucks locations around the world consistently have a good atmosphere, indirect lighting, relaxing music in the background, and great aromas. This is also why their coffee has unique names. At Starbucks, you don't order a simple black coffee. You order a Pike Place Blend Venti. Behavioral psychologist Dana Reilly has proven our brain tricks us into enjoying things more if we believe they are better. This means that even if the coffee at Starbucks is not actually scientifically better than the average coffee, the combination of the brand, the experience, and your belief that it is probably better makes your brain actually taste it as better coffee and enjoy it more than the average coffee. In other words, perception is reality. Now, let's hear the story behind Starbucks coffee. The first Starbucks opened in 1971, and it was a single store based in Seattle's Pike Place Market. Back then, Starbucks only sold fresh roasted coffee beans and coffee making equipment, filters, cones, mugs, etc. Starbucks brewed coffee to offer as samples, but it resisted in being in the coffee and espresso service business and focused primarily on selling fresh roasted coffee. Several times a week, a customer would walk in and ask to buy a cup of coffee and was puzzled to discover that they didn't sell fresh coffee by the cup. Partners initially resisted but eventually consented and built the first espresso bars and coffee service into a few of its locations. There were only six to eight Starbucks retail outlets in those days, and all in Seattle. Have you heard yet that Starbucks wasn't actually invented by coffee connoisseurs? It's true. Although the man most associated with the coffee chain is chairman and CEO, Howard Schultz, Starbucks was actually founded by three guys. Gordon Boker, a writer, Zev Siegel, a history teacher, and Jerry Baldwin, an English teacher all joined forces in the 70s to open up the first Starbucks in Seattle. Did you know what the biggest problem with the taste of Starbucks coffee was? Or why the Starbucks logo is too racy for some countries? So here are some interesting, crazy, and wild facts about this coffee company. You may not have known. As you might have noticed, Starbucks coffee appears in Game of Thrones and raises a wave of booze. In Season 8, Episode 4, titled The Last of the Starks, Daenerys can be seen sitting next to a Starbucks cup during a scene at Winterfell. Noticing the awkward blunder, one fan tweeted, I still can't believe they left a Starbucks cup in this scene from the biggest show on television. According to Bernie Caulfield, an executive producer on the show, the offending cup was just a simple mistake. While also quipping, Westeros was the first place to actually, you know, have Starbucks. Now, analyze the picture. What do you think is the logo of Starbucks? Queen or mermaid? As Jews around the world celebrated Purim, an Egyptian cleric called for a boycott against Starbucks throughout the Arab world, claiming that the woman in the international chain's logo is Queen Esther. Do you know what Queen Esther was and what the crown on her head means? This is the crown of the Persian kingdom. This queen is the queen of the Jews. She is mentioned in the Torah in the book of Esther, the cleric said. According to Doug Fast, the designer of the Starbucks logo, the woman depicted, is based on a Greek mythological siren, half woman, half fish. 
and has nothing to do with Queen Esther. So, is it true that the Starbucks owner supports the country of Israel? That being said, Howard Schultz embraces a lot of the cost of developing weapons for the Israeli army. In addition, all Starbucks services are provided free of charge to the Israeli army throughout the year. Ever wonder why it's called Starbucks? Well, it wasn't always called Starbucks. The Starbucks that we all know and love was not actually the original name of the company. The founders wanted to call it Pequod. Pequod was the name of the whaling ship from the book Moby Dick. The name didn't sit well with some of the co-founders and so they rejected it. They all came to a decision that it would be named after the chief mate on the Pequod, Starbuck. Now, knowing that one of the founders was a writer, we're not all that surprised. One disturbing fact, a man tries to masturbate in every Starbucks in New York City. First, you heard that right. Second, ugh. And third, there are 283 Starbucks in New York City. <laughs> if that's not creepy enough, the man known as Mr. PP. <laughs> In a now deleted tweet, he wrote, Today's Starbucks visit is rated a four boner. Spacious, clean, excellent coffee, strong Wi-Fi, no interruptions, and one hot chick. If you're in New York City, may we suggest never using a Starbucks bathroom again? Or if you must, scrub your hands with hot water before you leave. What was the biggest Starbucks scandal in history? Probably the biggest Starbucks scandal ever happened in 2018. Two black men were sitting in a Philadelphia Starbucks when they were arrested for not making a purchase. The manager of the store called the police and said that two men were sitting in the store when they hadn't bought anything and they refused to leave. Love the movie Fight Club? Well, I bet you didn't know that there is a cup of Starbucks in every scene. David Fincher, the movie's director, incorporated these Easter eggs as a way to show his appreciation for his beloved coffee house. Why is Starbucks logo considered too racy for some countries? In the Middle East, namely Saudi Arabia, where the siren has not appeared on the logo for over a decade, in 1992, the blog reports, the siren was deemed morally inappropriate for the country's predominantly Muslim clientele. The official Starbucks logo was changed on signage throughout Saudi Arabia to feature the siren's crown floating on a sea of coffee? Chances are good that you know that the Starbucks logo is a mermaid, even if you never buy coffee there. The mermaid, though, is actually a siren. Before 1987, it was super controversial because the siren was naked and had exposed nipples. In 1992, they changed it to be a little more covered up. The 30.9 ounce Trenta size cup is massive. The picture says it all. This ginormous drink holds about 30.9 ounces, which is slightly a bit more than what the average human stomach can hold. Have you ever been chatting away with a bunch of friends when someone would like to say something like, the freshest beans they have are just over a month old, to which the whole group would nod in agreement. But the thing is, no one would ever explain why. Here's the biggest problem with the taste of Starbucks coffee. It's all stale. In other words, they are using beans that have been roasted ages ago. Well, Starbucks prioritizes a big hit of caffeine over the taste of the coffee. They use stale coffee beans that are burnt to a crisp and hide it all with a dazzling selection of drinks that are loaded with sugar, cream, and other sweet and high calorie embellishments. Let's look at the evidence we can find then. The first point is that there is no roasting date on the coffee beans they sell. Not giving a roast date means you can sell coffee beans without any time pressures. The logistics become easier and you don't lose money when you have to throw out batches of old beans. And probably the biggest piece of evidence is the taste of a Starbucks espresso. Try one with nothing else in it. It just doesn't taste fresh. As we've reached the end, are there any little secrets about Starbucks that you can tell us? Waiting for your answers in the comments below. Do not forget to subscribe and hit that like button for more impactful topics. Thanks for watching.